So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to introduce you some finds and findings uh, uh, which might be of interest uh, for you, specialists in rocad architecture, though I'm not a specialist in that field. Uh, these finds come from uh, uh, central Sudan, from the Jebel Sabaloka, which is a small mountain uh, range uh, at the Six Nile Cataract, some 80 kilometers north of uh, today's Khartoum. Uh, in this area, our team is being uh, is, is uh, conducting uh, uh, research uh, specialized in a, in a prehistory, in a lot prehistory, hunter gatherers and uh, Neolithic uh, people. And uh, the area or the, the landscape you can see on the on the picture, it's a it's quite arid area today. It's a, actually it's a dry savanna, but in uh, early Holocene and part of the middle Holocene, it, it's been more green. Uh, let's start with the with the case of Sphinx. It's the site uh, shown on the picture, uh, where we we found, beside many other things, uh, we found on the walls of the rocks and, and uh, immovable boulders, we found um, circular, very very uniform uh, holes. You can see them on the picture, which uh, <clears throat> must have been drilled. They are clearly artificial. Here you can see some parameters of, of, uh, of summary of the parameters of, of these uh, holes. Uh, you can see uh, they are regular uh, of regular cylindrical shape. Uh, they have a uniform diameter about four four and a half centimeters. Uh, depth is uh, up to fifty centimeters. And uh, uh, I have to say the, gr uh, the the rock it's a, it's a granite, so it's quite hard rock. They are always on vertical rock walls, uh, never on the on the horizontal surfaces, and uh, at the height of, of uh, up to several meters above the present day surface. Um, in 2017, we published uh, a reconstruction or the ideas about the function of these uh, drilled holes because uh, uh, to, to to drill them in the gran granite background it must have constitute a task of marked difficulty. So it's clear it, it, it means something, it had some function. Uh, although we cannot uh, exclude that they may have been created in connection with some rituals or magic action, there is nothing to suggest such an interpretation. It thus falls outside the possibilities of factual argumentation and for this reason it is not pursued further in this paper. The fact that the design, orientation and distribution of these holes obey certain rules, uh, uh, on the contrary, suggests they were to fulfill some kind of practical function. Directly at the site, when documenting the relics, we discussed several hypotheses. For instance, uh, they were proposed to have constituted remains of packs to hang objects or letters and scaffolding known from other sites in North Africa, Sahara and Sahelian belt. However, such use are contradicted by the small diameter of the holes, their inclination and depth, and by the uh, lack of uh, reasonable justification for the existence of such fittings at the given uh, particular places. The sole practically acceptable explanation has appeared to, to be uh, to view the features as remains of building constructions made of wooden components affixed to the rocks. Uh, let's have a look at the reconstruction. Uh, we will we will be we will uh, look at these two high, uh, biggest concentrations of the of the hole, uh, found in the northern shelter and sixty in the northern part of the site. So let's start with, with this one. <coughs> You see the uh, the, uh, the holes. Uh, the colors indicate the depth. Uh, three, uh, four categories. The red ones are the, the most deep. It's uh, between thirty and fifty centimeters. Uh, and the arrows uh, indicate the orientation of the holes. So this is the uh, original uh, level of the of the terrain before before the deflation in the uh, Holocene period. Then th there is a figure of. 175 centimeters. So the idea is that the whole uh, the, that the holes uh, were used to put a pole inside, to bend it and to sunk it uh, in the in the terrain and in front of the of the rock. Uh, so this way we get the uh, the most fixed and uh, most uh, solid uh, part of the construction. Whereas the horizontal ones are just to to finish the construction and then you can put whatever uh, cover on it. It can be uh, leaves, it can be matting, it can be leather, whatever. Uh, and the construction still is big enough to uh, to uh, give place for a standing person inside. Uh, this 
maybe at first sight strange shape is it, it's quite logical. You see that the, um, uh, the, the the incline of the of the of the roof is uh, it's quite logical because uh, from the northern shelter when the uh, uh, when the rain comes uh, it's it's good to drain the rainwater out of the shelter. So uh, this is exactly the position we would expect. And even uh, there is a small entrance. It's it's big like uh, high like that. Uh, which allows people to enter inside, but still it uh, it uh, and it gives the right direction. It, it means out of the shelter because on the other side there, there are already the rock walls. The, uh, this is the other occurrence in, in the northern part of the site where we have another uh, um, uh, sixteen uh, holes. And uh, let's have a look at the reconstruction again to put the vertical uh, poles, then the horizontal ones. Uh, in this case, we suppose it's just hypothetical reconstruction. Of course, uh, the entrance might might be in this uh, location or in that one. The, the last, the, the latter one is uh, fits much much better with the situation in the previous case of the structure one. So, uh, just based on the on the observation and the, and the idea that the main main particle or main element was was the where the light wooden poles or uh, roots or whatever. Of food, uh, we came to the to actually very similar architecture, which is known ethnographically uh, 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 from North Africa, and you would find that even uh, throughout the world, especially at the mobile or semi-mobile societies. These are just ex uh, examples uh, uh, from uh, from the Tuareg communities or Rendels uh, on, the, on the right side. You see the, the logic is still the same. You have a pole, you just bend it. And uh, then you put horizontal elements, and then you cover. Another example uh, from from Africa. Uh, in this case, you can see that the house. Uh, what is what is the house that dwelling? It's just the place for the bed because all other activities are outside the the, uh, the house the dwelling. Yeah. In other cases, uh, however, there are, there are houses which uh, host more more space, not only for the bed but for other domestic activities. And just examples of a of a covers of a covering, like a matting, uh, uh, straw, uh, leather. The the very good advantage of this of this light architecture known from ethnographic evidence is that you just take the poles, you put them on the camel or whatever uh, uh, carrier, and you can move it anywhere. So it's in this case in ethnographic evidence is typical for uh, mobile societies, as I said. So uh, back to the but, but, but back to the site. The thing is that uh, no one has so far uh, attested this kind of architecture in connection with the rock wall. So this is uh, uh, if we are right in the reconstruction, uh, it means this is some kind of already uh, uh, not existing uh, way of building using the rock walls. Uh, as I said. It, it's per, it can be uh, dwellings because the space is big enough for the construction structure one. It's uh, some 70, 17 square meters. The, 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 the other one in front, it's some eight square meters. And you can see that people can stand inside, so it's quite uh, good. Uh, <clears throat> as for the dating, at the site of Sphinx, of Sphinx, we have no idea because uh, it's impossible to, to, to date the, the holes directly. But we just suggested in the publication 2017 that is rather uh, from the early, early, uh, early Holocene because uh, when, when the terrain was much uh, higher uh, before it was degraded after the desiccation of North Africa uh, because otherwise uh, the building would be too high uh, for no, uh, uh, no uh, clear reason. So it is, but it was just an, uh, an idea without clear dating. Since then uh, we continued, uh, beside many other things, we continued uh, surveying and, uh, and recording of these holes. And you can see uh, in, in, the, in the area of so-called rocky cities, uh, uh, we, we, so far we surveyed all this area up to here. This part is still waiting for us. And in, in here, uh, there are thousands of uh, rock walls and in, immovable boulders. We had to run around each uh, singular stone. And we recorded all, all occurrences. And as you can see, uh, all the sites marked here, it's, it's Mesolithic sites, it's, uh, it's uh, before 6000 BC. So uh, you can see all the dots, very, uh, the red ones, which is the occurrence of, uh, occurrences of uh, the holes, nicely 
fit with, with uh, the distribution of the sites. Uh, just have a, look, a closer look at that. Uh, just one example, you can see the main areas of the Mesolithic site with the subsidiary ones, and, and among them, in the between, there are the occurrences of, of the holes. The, the identical ones, four centimeter in diameter, drilled inside the, uh, the bedrock. Another occurrence, another one. Another one. Uh, this one is, is very nice. Uh, it's, it's quite close to the site of Sphinx. Uh, uh, I showed you the example of the, of the architecture, the constructed architecture in this area. But since that, we, we collected another evidence from, from, the, from the foot of the slopes. And uh, there is another one. Uh, example, this is actually, this is actually, you know, if you just cut in, uh, in the middle of this construction, you, you, you connect it to the, to the rock behind it. So, uh, so clearly, uh, these, uh, the, the, in, my, in our view, this find, uh, which you didn't know before, uh, clearly, clearly confirms the idea of, uh, of a hut, uh, a joint to the, uh, fixed to the, to the rock walls. However, uh, many other uh, holes uh, uh, you cannot interpret in this way as, as the remains of dwellings or houses. So, um, in this case, where you, you find uh, grinding hollows just in front of them, these are uh, Mesolithic ones, uh, you have no idea what, 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 they, what uh, their function was, but uh, we are thinking maybe shades, you know, to prolong the shade of the stone for the, for the whole day. So, the, but it's just it's very difficult, you know, to interpret. In many other cases, we have no idea. And in cases like this, or this, uh, uh, you know, it, for us, it makes no sense in, in a practical sense. Maybe it just uh, it's, it was a game. We don't know. Uh, maybe there was some constructions we cannot just imagine. So this is still waiting for interpretation for anyone, and not uh, not only us. So let me just uh, uh, conclude. There is only one uh, common denom denominator of the drilled holes found at Sabaloka, the need to fix a light pole construction to an immovable rock, be it for a dwelling or other kinds of installations. Some of them are located directly within the uh, early, uh, early Holocene habitation areas. Others come from working zones mostly devoted to grinding on the peripheries of the early Holocene site, and the rest of them simply occur in close vicinity of the first part of the letter. Since the holes were drilled into hard granite rocks, it is very probable that their makers have envisaged long into the uh, future function of these elements. So it was not just for one time, it, uh, it presupposes it, it took, uh, they plan to come back to the site or they, uh, it, or it can suggest even continuous stay at the site. Uh, at the site. Uh, on the side, uh, let me just add that for their effectiveness and at the same time simplicity, we can assume uh, the use of such anchoring elements also in much later periods. This is so not only in Mesolithic. This is indicated by the finds of nearly identical holes drilled into the walls of historical monumental buildings, such as in this case in Sufa. Uh, uh, we, co we contacted many, many uh, specialists uh, doing uh, survey in, uh, in rocky areas in, in Sahara and, and other parts of the world, um, and also specialists uh, in, uh, in, uh, archi in uh, ancient architecture from that region. And asked them, do you, do you know such, such a holes? No one had the idea. Like, uh, they didn't know that. But they're only looking at the picture. This is just a picture taken by accident uh, during our uh, visit on the site. We'll see. Just something uh, which no one knows, uh, or maybe because no one uh, was thinking about the function of this, uh, they are just omitted in, in the publications and they are not recorded even. But uh, I think it's uh, it's worth it. So, uh, as for the significance, uh, our aim was to bring to the notice quite an archaic but so far unknown form of mixed constructions in which rocks first had a stabilization with its anchoring function. And second, in case of dwellings, they formed part of the structures on one or more of their walls. With a view to the dating of these constructions in the, in the Sabaloka Mountains to the early Holocene, we may be touching the very beginnings of artificial modification of rocks with the aim to, at adapting them to suit uh, practical functions. At Sabaloka, the basic technological principle was combination of stable and enduring elements 
it is drilled hole, holes of certain parameters and distribution, and, on the other hand, light and easily decaying wooden poles, which were easy to replace with low cost. In any case, the above presented type of artificial features on rocks or boulders extends the spectrum of constructions whose identification by means of surface field survey or excavation of archaeological deposits is quite difficult or, especially in arid regions with heavily deflated terrains, no longer possible. Thank you for your uh, attention.